Welcome to TabletopBattle.com and a review of the uh, Empires in Flames, the Pacific and Far East supplement for the Bolt Action Miniatures World War II game. Uh, this is a uh, newly released uh, theater book and uh, Osprey Publishing was kind enough to send us a copy so that we could uh, take a look at it and uh, give you uh, viewers our impression of this uh, book. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Let's take a look. Okay, so what have we got in this book? Well, first of all, it's 124 pages and it's uh, it feels good. It's uh, lots of pages. It's hefty and uh, I like it. it. It feels good in the hand. You can tell that you get a lot of uh, information for your uh, money. Um, it's uh, divided into four theaters. You have the Second Sino-Japanese War which uh, includes the Chinese and they are included with a full army list in this book. Uh, very very cool and it goes on for quite a few pages uh, about that. Also lots of new units uh, for uh, the Japanese also. Um, then you have um, the Red Sun Rises, which is, uh, of course, uh, Japan's uh, start of the war against the West, if you like. Um, goes on for uh, some pages. And then you have Burma and India, where you will have some uh, British and Chindits and uh, Gurkhas fighting. Um, also in this book are uh, rules for mules, so if you have your... Uh, Chindits and the mule handler, you can now use it. Very cool. Uh, and lastly, after Burma and India, you have island hopping, which is of course the uh, US fighting back against the Japanese. Uh, so those are the four theaters, if you like. And then you have some new scenario rules, um, which are very cool. Some of them, of course, you have seen before, some are new. We will take a look at that uh, when we get there. Okay, so the first part, uh, as we talked about, is the Second Sino-Japanese War. Uh, you get uh, seven or eight pages about uh, the background, prelude to the war, some background about the war, uh, some uh, important and pivotal battles during this uh, war and also the years in which they took place. And uh, these are of course battles taking place in China. So about eight or nine pages about that. And then you get two specific scenarios for playing in China, the Marco Polo Bridge and also trench warfare in Shanghai. Uh, they will also use the new city fighting rules, which we will take a look at later. But uh, two specific scenarios for uh, China. And then, of course, uh, they tell you that you can also use uh, the six uh, scenarios from the Bolt Action rulebook. Um, and then something cool, you actually get seven theater selectors for playing games in China. So you have the Battle of Shanghai, you have the Battle of Tai Er Chuang, 1938. You have the Eighth Ruth Army, goes from 37 to 45. So very cool to have the option of playing very early war and late war. You have the X and Y Force in Burma, which was uh, two uh, Chinese uh, units that were brought up and uh, commanded by the United States, uh, fighting against the Japanese. Then you have the Imperial Japanese Quantum Army in 1937 and the same army in 1945 and the Soviet Army fighting in Manchuria 1945. So all these uh, army lists are uh, nice to have to conduct some operations in China. And of course later in the book we get to the Chinese army list uh, which is uh, quite uh, extensive. Uh, like I mentioned, you have the mule team, so uh, I have had my chindits uh, sitting on the shelf for quite some time and now I'm thinking it's time to bring them out. Also Imperial Japanese units, where you get some uh, new infantry, 
We get uh, some new uh, infantry weapons, anti-aircraft guns, 88mm and uh, this Suku Sagyu SS Ki-1 armored work vehicle looks very cool. It has actually three flamethrowers and you can upgrade it to five. And it's a multi-purpose vehicle. I especially like this part uh, which is called bridging. If you are um, facing a uh, gap or a river or something like that, this uh, vehicle actually allows another vehicle to drive over it. Uh, three inches in front and behind. So that's very cool. And then you have a new um, Japanese armored car, which I think is the best so far. 75 points give you a turret mounted mini machine gun and one hull mounted light machine gun. So that's seven shots you can dish out. And it has the recce rule. So a nice cheap infantry killer. And then you get some Mongolian cavalry also. Uh, so those are the uh, extra units you get for fighting in China. Uh, of course you can probably use them elsewhere if you would like to. Now you have the option. Uh, then we go into the army of uh, armies of China which like I said is uh, quite uh, extensive. There are a few options there. You have the nationalist, nationalist Chinese. Uh, then you have the Chinese in Burma. Uh, where you can have a mix of Chinese, British and American uniforms and weapons. And then you have Chinese warlords. That's actually very cool. You can uh, make an army of marauders. Uh, very, very cool. And then you have the communist Chinese. So all these are represented in uh, this uh, game or in this book. Uh, then you have some special rules for them will not go into that much detail. You of course have to buy the book or the clever of you will pause and take a look. Then you also get these legends. Uh, they will come true out the book. Not only China but uh, Japan and the British and uh, Indian actually. Japanese. Uh, then you have your uh, proper arm list with uh, lots of uh, options and they of course use uh, Equipment both from Germany and um, British and United States since they were supplied from different uh, countries. So lots of uh, options here. Of course not the most vicious and uh, heavy tanks uh, and armor cars as you would expect but uh, I always like to play uh, early war games and uh, games that are not too powerful makes for a more interesting game I think so lots of information lots of cool units and uh, then you go over to the Red Sun Rises which is the uh, Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and then their island hopping trying to conquer the uh, Asian uh, area so here you get um, the same eight or nine pages of uh, background for the uh, uh, Red Sun Rising. Of course, much of this is already covered in the Armies of uh, Japan uh, book. So if you have that, it uh, won't be too much new. Uh, and that's also why this uh, section of the book is not that big, actually. It's uh, not so many pages. Uh, you get uh, two new scenarios, and they also um, tip you about four scenarios that is fitting for playing uh, in this uh, setting. Uh, and also the use of some special rules. As you can see there is uh, night fighting. Night fighting rules are included here. You also have amphibious assault which is uh, quite cool. It gives some um, interesting uh, things that can happen when playing uh, amphibious assaults in the Pacific setting that is, not so much in the European setting. But anyway, uh, like I said, four scenarios from the original rulebook and then you get two new ones, Battle of the Points and Airfield Defense. Um, and then you get a theater selector, which is uh, the Battling Bastards of Bataan, which introduces Philippines, Filipinos. And then there is one Philippine unit here, which is a Filipino scout. And then of course a Legend of the Philippines, which is quite cool. 
And this uh, private first class Narcisco Ortilano, he sounds like a mean mother. Take a look at that. Uh, then we move over to Burma and India. So as you can see, the part containing the, the Japanese uh, invasion is not that many pages. But like I said, Armies of Japan holds most of, most of that anyway. So for Burma and India, you also have the nine, ten pages of uh, background information, which is quite cool. You can get some uh, good uh, information about what happened and where where things uh, changed and some uh, pivotal points during the campaigns. Um, so those are there. Legends of the Commonwealth, of course. Lots of information. And then you go over to fighting the campaigns itself. You get the same list of uh, missions that you can use from the original uh, Bolt Action rulebook, which are all six. Then you can also use scenario three and four with a little bit of modification, as they say. And then you have two new scenarios. This one, I think is very cool. Ambush on the Burma Road, a real ambush mission. And you can also see here the setup, very, very cool. Also includes uh, options for night fighting. Uh, but this is a proper jungle mission, proper jungle mission where you can be ambushed from approximately everywhere. Uh, then you have the HQ raid, which uh, was uh, something the uh, Allies did, trying to go in and, and take uh, what they could from the Japanese, uh, do as much damage with as, with as little forces as possible. Capture intelligence and kill officers. Um, exhaustion is a new special rule, very very cool. Well, it depends what you roll, of course. <laughs> Could be cool. Uh, then you get a few more additional units. You get native regulars. This is very cool. I like it a lot. It gives a lot of flavor to the game where you can have uh, natives fighting for you or help you. Uh, starting with three men and you can up that to ten if you like. They count as uh, infantry for, for the purpose of the reinforced platoon selectors. Uh, you get Imperial Japanese unit, Indian National Army, Chinese uh, slash US unit, Merrill's Marauders. You get Australian Commandos, you get Gurkha Paratroopers, very cool. And of course a uh, uh, Gurkha Soldier Legend, very very nice. You need to read these things and, and Try to imagine what these guys went through. It's uh, it's amazing. And then the final theater is island hopping, which is uh, of course when the U.S. Uh, starts to take the islands captured by the Japanese back. So for the island hopping part, you get uh, actually 14 pages. That's of course pictures included, uh, but still 14 pages of background um, telling you about the campaign to recapture lost ground. Um, so a lot of information there. You get of course Legend of the United States, John Bassalone, as you can uh, also see in the uh, series TV series uh, The Pacific. Now you can play him in your games. Sergeant Tom Derrick for the Commonwealth. And Kuribashi from uh, Japan. Uh, then you got two new scenarios, Alligator Creek. Uh, this is based off uh, Godal Kanala, uh, of course. And then you have Bloody Tarawa, which is, of course, Tarawa. Uh, so two new scenarios there, uh, bringing the total in this book up to eight, naturally, since this was the last one. So a bit uh, fewer than in the um, book for uh, Germany Strikes, one I reviewed uh, before this one, uh, but still a lot of flavor, a lot of more, mo lots more information in this book, lots more uh, special rules and, and cool new units. Uh, then you get a few more additional units, United States Marine Corps Raiders and my favorite US Marine Corps War Dog Team. Very, very cool. 
they can use to be spotting uh, enemy units within 24 inches so very nice if you play scenario with the uh, hidden units uh, Japanese snipers anyone uh, then you got the M29 weasel and you got Levis Lewis chesty puller a legend of the United States and then we are over to the new scenario rules which I have talked a little bit about here you will find the uh, tropical hazards such as exhaustion you have this tropical hazards table where you can roll uh, to see randomly what happens uh, exhaustion is one uh, option here you also got mud and the monsoon season which will uh, give effect to airstrikes and visibility and whatnot uh, so those are some cool additions then you get night fighting this has of course been released by warlord games previously as a as an additional uh, pdf but now we have it in the book which is quite nice so now you can uh, really try that out because night fighting was a pivotal part of the uh, pacific campaign uh, then you get dug in rules for that foxholes trenches gun pits Spider hole networks by the Japanese. Very cool. I'm thinking Vietnam. Uh, you got minefield rules. Those have been with us for some time. Amphibious assault. This is very cool because here you come into the part I talked about where you have some hazard reef table that you can roll on to see what will uh, or what can happen when you try to land your. Uh, LVT or landing craft and also if you're using the type 2 Ka Mi amphibious tanks so those can be agreed upon to use to add some more flavor uh, then there are also some landing craft uh, for you to use uh, to give you some points values so that you have that much like in the uh, uh, Germany strikes book where you get some uh, rules for fortifications here you get rules for landing craft so that you can use boats you have landing craft assault landing craft personnel landing craft mechanized so if you have a suitable model you can now use it uh, with the real uh, points values and rules for that rules for city fighting this is of course also in the Ostron book uh, but it's uh, once again over here over here it's uh, repeated in this book and then command and control in a city fight which is uh, quite a cool uh, thing to try where you have to put one unit in down or ambush mode for each turn so in turn one it's one turn two it's two and turn three it's three and so on so that is used to represent that your units are getting deeper and deeper into enemy territory and uh, there is not uh, an easy line of communication so that uh, a forward unit might be able to get uh, far ahead but then loses contact with uh, his support so that is 124 pages of uh, empires in flames the pacific and far east uh, i think uh, this is the best book so far by uh, Osprey and Warlord Games mainly because I like the Pacific uh, very good but also because of the introduction of uh, China which I hope will make a lot of people happy uh, and the options now for starting your games in 1937 uh, so that gives you uh, lots of new options for playing your games of bolt action and of course a lot of options for your wallet to be emptied to get more models okay so this has been uh, Svein from uh, tabletopbattle.com and uh, once again a big thank you to Osprey Publishing for uh, sending the book and of course to Warlord Games and Alessio Cavatore for making an awesome game that we all love and enjoy so thank you for watching Please join our uh, Facebook page, Tabletop Battle Bolt Action. And uh, subscribe for more videos, of course, to help our channel grow. And we will see you on the battlefield.